Hi everyone, I am Vinny Jaiswal, Developer Advocate at Databricks, and today I want to go through a video, uh, one of the sessions of video series called Builders and Bricksters. And today we have Ted Lee from Blitz, who I absolutely have pleasure to interview, go through their journey, why they picked Databricks, and what are some of the challenges they faced. So Ted, do you want to give a quick intro about yourself? Hi, yeah, um, nice to meet you all. I'm Ted Lee. I am the head of data here at Blitz. Um, and yeah, so just a quick background about Blitz. Blitz, uh, we are a platform that we are building to really help players of the most popular games really improve at the games that they love playing and also have fun at the same time. That's awesome. I love gaming companies, Ted, and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of uh, individuals who love uh, playing games and uh, would love to understand how gaming industry works and how do you develop games, how do you improve user experience. So one of the first questions I have, you already touched who Blitz is, um, just going a little bit deeper into what is Blitz goal as a company and what are some of the, uh, some of the data initiatives you are working on? Yeah. Yeah, from a kind of more technical perspective, um, Blitz as a platform really wants to sort of augment the way that people get to enjoy and play and improve uh, the games that are, you know, some of the most popular games around the world. And for a data team, uh, that can take the form of tons of different things, right? Um, from the high level, we need data in order to help make us the most accurate business uh, decisions to help us steer the direction and understand the success um, the outreach, the you know progression of our product, uh, but then even on a more technical level, we need to leverage data however we can in order to actually create analytics, to create coaching insights, uh, to help the players understand their performance in the game and how to get better. And really, that's kind of one of the biggest investments that our company has uh, at the moment. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a lot of, I'm assuming, a lot of complex things that you have to set up to, you know, make sure that uh, players realize their performance and they can improve it. So a lot of user performance, product analytics there. So I want to understand some of the technical challenges that Blitz have faced uh, setting up this data pipelines. Yeah, I think that um, the way that we split our work is into almost like three different buckets of data. And I can talk a little bit about the high level challenges of each one. And then depending on how you want to go into them, we can talk more deeply. Um, the three kind of big buckets, the first one being sort of data engineering and data processing. Uh, because we are a platform that spans multiple different games, uh, we have to integrate very closely with tons of different third party APIs, tons of different publishers. We have data sources from all over the place, not only just from the gaming companies, but from other companies that we you know, manage our subscriptions with, that we do our ads, that we measure the performance of our app on. And so with all these different data sources, with the crazy amounts of data that we have flowing in, we have multiple terabytes of data flowing in from all of our different games every day. Building a extremely scalable, efficient, robust data engineering product is one of the core challenges that we are solving at Blitz. Onto the second one, you know, we have sort of our business and product analytics. Uh, this is something that uh, the company has been doing for a while, uh, but especially more so in the most recent year, uh, we've really been scaling up that, trying to understand our user base, understand our product, understand where we're doing well, where we can be doing better, and sort of presenting that in the most consumable way to the rest of the company, as well as being able to iterate on what we're doing. And then the last one, which is probably the most data heavy bucket, which is where we are um, in the future planning on investing most of our time is really figuring out how can we leverage those massive amounts of data that we're collecting from all these different game companies um, to build the best analytics, to build the best coaching, to leverage machine learning, deep learning, AI, reinforcement learning technologies, and really scale out and build kind of that next level, that next generation of personalized, actionable, insightful coaching. That's awesome, Ted. And I see that there is a lot of complexity around setting up different technologies. You covered data analytics, you covered machine learning. So I want to understand from you, what are some of the best practices you follow when incorporating any new technology into your data architecture? 
Yeah. So we're at this kind of interesting point in the company where we uh, are still trying to operate very leanly, but we're really trying to scale up our efforts and build as many different products as possible. And so as a result, we often do have to like lean more into finding these vendor solutions, finding different technologies that we can leverage. And so some of the things that we really look for is, you know, what is that cost of onboarding or migrating off of our current solution, whether those new companies or vendors can support us, whether they have nice integrations or really have kind of streamlined that entire process. Outside of that, we're also looking for services where we have people on the other end who are extremely technical subject matter expertises, uh, who, have, who are subject matter experts, who are able to then, you know, really understand our use case, our exact kind of way of using the technology and not just like in a super simple cookie cutter way, really trying to solve and approach the problems that we have. Because, you know, every single company, even every single project within a different company is going to have different limitations. Yeah, that, those are those are awesome uh, points that you hit, uh, Ted. So I want to uh, gain a little bit of understanding on how uh, you did your architecture, for example, like what are the how did you make some of the architectural decisions? Would you be able to, uh, you know, um, uh, hit on some of the technologies you use? So I think one of the coolest things about setting up our entire architecture uh, on the Databricks Lakehouse platform was that uh, we did get a lot of support from various Databricks essays uh, who, you know, did a lot of interviews with us, tried to understand what are the things that we need uh, and from a high level, really structure what it looks like. Uh, from there, we kind of figured out this architecture diagram. It has changed over time, uh, but you know, at a very high level, as I mentioned earlier, we have tons of different data sources. Uh, we have data that's collected from our front-end servers, our back-end servers, various game APIs, other third-party vendors. And because of the way that Databricks is sort of over an object store, it's relatively convenient where we can just drop all of our data uh, into, in our case, S3, uh, batch it up, and then read them into Databricks. Uh, once stuff is in Databricks, we are super uh, closely working with like the Data Lake uh, platform. So you know this is something that actually didn't really exist last time I used Databricks. So it's been a learning experience at the same time. Uh, but we follow the sort of standard Databricks uh, architecture of that bronze, silver, and gold layers. Uh, in our team, we call it kind of like raw, validated, or conformed, and then model tables. But it follows a very similar structure where we sort of land stuff in the uh, in the bronze. We do some uh, data validation. We conform it to various schemas in the silver level. And then as our data analysts, as our data scientists start iterating on that and creating more transformed, more useful tables down the line, those go over to the gold tables. Um, all of this, you know, taking advantage of Data Lake, you know, uh, we're seeing tons of improvements inefficiency as well as developer workflow by being able to leverage things like all of the different uh, rollbacks and versionings of the tables, being able to do all the writes, auto compaction, um, and, you know, just a lot of these really nice to have features that, you know, to be completely honest, totally weren't there when I first used Databricks the first time around. But switching gears a little bit more into developer productivity. So how much has Databricks in general improved developer productivity. I think you already mentioned that you have managed to do a lot with a small team. Would you like to add anything else? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of tools uh, that Databricks provides that helps encourage the kind of styles of working and developer productivity that we're looking for here at Blitz. So I think one of the almost simplest things that's been super great is the way that Databricks has its collaboration and like notebook structure. Um, you know, notebooks aren't necessarily the best way to build strong production code and models and everything, but especially for a team that is really focused on iterating, really focused on building stuff, and it also focused on, you know, sharing their notebooks with each other, collaborating with each other. Uh, it's been super useful for us to, you know, have the team work together and tackle new problems. Uh, outside of that, you know, one of the really great things about Databricks is that it has strong integrations with a lot of the different tools that we use, and it makes sort of the whole data developer process as seamless and low friction as possible. So, you know, we don't need to worry about data ingress or egress. We don't really need to worry about writing complex uh, configurations for how we want to optimize or compute or do auto scaling, things like that. Um, it has close integration with a lot of different applications that we use, such as Tableau. 
Uh, and you know, even from a data ingest standpoint, we've got new things like autoloader that we're able to use and sort of uh, really free up a lot of the time from our data engineers to solve more challenging problems. So uh, thank you, Ted, for providing some of the information about how Databricks has Im improved your developer productivity. Um, how in terms of cost, uh, was it efficient for you to, you know, go through this exercise as well as how, uh, how in terms of cost uh, would you say uh, it has provided value? Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the nice things about using Databricks is, you know, uh, from a very high level, Databricks is a very flexible, configurable platform. It's almost just like arbitrary distributed compute that is managed for you, right? And so as a result, we can really build the exact solution that we have for every single use case um, such that it's you know optimized for what we need to do. So for a lot of our data, you know, that data only needs to be updated on a daily basis. You know, we don't need to worry about streaming. We don't need to worry about like quick updates or anything like that. And so for those, we're able to like highly leverage the batch processing optimizations and, uh, you know, compute comp capabilities of Spark and Databricks. Um, and through leveraging the job clusters, through, you know, borrowing time from a lot of the Spark experts over at Databricks, we've been able to optimize our queries. And, we, you know, we're processing terabytes of data on the orders of, you know, multiple dollars to maybe tens of dollars every single day. Would you be able to talk in terms of like, you know, how much volumes are we talking when you process your data and how much iterations does it take? Like, for example, how much uh, do you how much do you expect like different data sources uh, working with different data sources? Yeah. yeah. So our platform has, you know, millions of daily uh, active users and all of them are playing games. And so it does depend uh, quite a bit on what, how rich of the data we can, like how rich the data we can get from the different games we're working with are. Uh, but I can say that, you know, some of our more popular games are sending us on the order of terabytes uh, of data per day for us to compute, right? Um, and that's only talking about some of the games and we are actively working on scaling up the number of games. So, you know, within the next year or two, we expect to be processing, you know, multiple to tens of terabytes of data every single day. And uh, as I may have mentioned earlier, like a lot of these data structures are extremely complex uh, structures, extremely complex JSON. Um, they need a lot of unwinding and processing. And all of that is something that we can write and as in as efficient of a manner through Spark. I want to understand how it it has been paying off. Like, what is the ROI you are able to get out of working with Databricks? Yeah, so I think that uh, working with Databricks has paid off for us in a lot of different ways, right? Um, if I just go back to a few of the points that I was talking about earlier about things we're looking with vendors, you know, we got to work directly with some Databricks solution architects. Uh, we've gotten to speak with various SMEs on different teams, including a lot of the different platform teams, MLflow, et cetera. And all of those people uh, have really helped make the transition uh, to really to the Databricks platform, really uh, really smooth and helped us kind of really dig into this feature set uh, that Databricks is able to provide for us, right? Um, outside of that, you know, we have been able to truly scale up the amount of data that we are consuming, that we are processing. We're, a lot, we're able to be much more robust with the way that we validate our data, uh, that we monitor our systems and that we track kind of various KPIs around the company. and all of that while saving money and making stuff much more cost efficient and time efficient, um, which is really massive for, again, a team that's kind of small and really trying to uh, build a lot of things at the same time. Thank you, Ted. Um, that was amazing interview. Thanks for providing a lot of insights. And to all of you, uh, this was Ted Lee from Blitz uh, into our Builders and Brickstars series. Uh, we will have some more customers, so please stay tuned and uh, definitely give us feedback on what uh, you want to see next. Thank you all. Bye.